Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer, liaison to ACIP, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to the American College of Physicians 2022 Adult Immunization Video Series. The topic, new pneumococcal vaccination recommendations for 2022. Pneumococcal disease has serious consequences. It's the most common cause of bacterial pneumonia. In 2017, more than 100,000 adults 19 and older were hospitalized with pneumococcal pneumonia. Non-bacteremic pneumonia is classified as non-invasive disease. Invasive pneumococcal disease, IPD, is even worse and includes meningitis, bacteremia, and bacteremic pneumonia. In 2019, there were an estimated 30,000 IPD cases and 3,000 IPD deaths. Risk of pneumococcal disease increases with age. Risk is highest in those 65 and older, as well as in younger adults with chronic medical and immunocompromising conditions. It hits these risk groups hard. 43% of cases of invasive disease occur in adults 65 and older but 48%, that's nearly half of them, are in younger adults, those 19 to 64, with risk-based indications, including chronic medical conditions, cochlear implants and CSF leaks, as well as immunocompromising conditions. The bottom line, more than 90% of the current burden of invasive pneumococcal disease in adults occurs in those 19 to 64 with risk factors and in those 65 and older. This is why pneumococcal vaccination is so important. ACIP has now updated who needs which pneumococcal vaccine and when. The old pneumococcal vaccination recommendation was cumbersome and complicated. Different combinations of PPSV23 with and without PCV13 at various intervals and different numbers of PPSV23 doses according to age and risk groups along with shared clinical decision-making for some. The end result was confusion and often a conundrum as to what to recommend and when. Out with the old and in with the new, sort of, PPSV23 remains, but PCV13 is out. Two new vaccines, PCV15 and PCV20, are in. This new pneumococcal vaccination recommendation is somewhat more simplified with two options to choose from a two vaccine combo of conjugate PCV brand name Vax Nuance, followed by the already familiar PPSV23 polysaccharide vaccine brand name Pneumovax, or a single dose of the new PCV20 brand name Prevnar. So what's the difference between these vaccines other than just the number of pneumococcal strains covered? Vaccine composition for one, and it matters. It determines immune mechanism and immunologic memory. PPSV23 is a pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. It's made from capsular polysaccharide antigens only. PPSV23 is T cell independent. It does not produce memory B cells. The other three vaccines are conjugate vaccines, PCV. All three of them contain capsular polysaccharides which are then conjugated to a protein carrier, a non-toxic diphtheria protein called CRM197. PCV mechanism is T cell dependent and does produce memory B cells, so it induces greater immune memory. Differences in valency include additions and omission. The new PCV versions augment coverage of the lower valent versions. PCV13 covers 13 strains. PCV15 adds on protections from two additional serotypes. PCV20 expands protection to five more. Now let's compare that to coverage from PPSV23. PPSV23 includes protection from serotypes covered by PCV20 with one exception, type 6A. It also covers four additional serotypes not included in PCV20. Here's some background on why there are two choices as recommendation options. ACIP looks at available data. There are no studies directly comparing PCV15 and PCV20 
efficacy and safety. However, a comparison of PCV13 to PCV20 showed PCV20 triggered a lower immune response for 12 to 13 out of the 13 shared serotypes. However, the clinical relevance of this lower immunogenicity for PCV20 versus PCV13 is unknown. However, PCV20 is likely to provide improved protection against the five serotypes included in PPSD23, but not in PCV15. But if you give PCV20 alone, you lose protection against the four serotypes unique to PPSD23, hence the two options either a single dose of PCV20 or the two vaccine combo, a dose of PCV15 followed by a dose of PPSV23. Both options are included on both tables in the new ACIP adult schedule. Vaccine order also matters. When giving vaccines in combination, the ideal order is specific. Try to give the congenate vaccine first. There's theoretical concern getting a polysaccharide vaccine first could blunt immune response of the conjugate vaccine. So give PCV first if you can. No matter what the order, the recommended interval between PCV15 and PPSV23 is at least a year. However, for those with immunocompromising conditions, cochlear implants, or cerebrospinal fluid leaks, a minimum interval of eight weeks can be considered. The new recommendation was not without controversy. Many at ACIP voted preference for an age-based recommendation, starting at 50 instead of 65, to reduce disparities in disease burden in adults aged 50 to 64, and to provide more opportunities to vaccinate adults before they develop underlying conditions. However, vaccinating at 50 rather than 65 could lead to waning immunity later in life when risk of disease is higher. Logistically, giving PCV15 in series with PPSV23 is more challenging to administer. You have to know the vaccination history to correctly complete the series. This could result in lower serotype coverage if the series is not completed. Both the risk-based and the age-based indications in the new recommendation provide an opportunity for higher PCV coverage, which may prevent more disease compared with the old recommendation. So it's a win-win for patients. Also at the January ACIP meeting, many work group members were in favor of giving a higher valent PCV to those who already received PCV13 with or without PPSV23. This didn't happen. The work group makes suggestions, but ACIP voting members do just that. They are the ones who vote. ACIP makes evidence-based decisions and the incremental public health benefit of giving an additional higher valent PCV in this setting has not been evaluated. Look for the January 28th issue of MMWR for the full recommendation, which does not recommend an additional PCV 15 or 20 for those who only received PCV-13 with or without PPSV-23. ACIP recommendations become official CDC policy when approved by the CDC director and published in MMWR. For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer. <laughs>